Okay, let's look at this example, journalizing and uh, uh, journalizing adjusting entries and uh, posting to the T accounts. This is typical of a problem that you might see. Um, to start with, we have a bunch of uh, unadjusted balances, and then the data for the adjusting entries are listed here. And so the problem asks us to open the T accounts for the unadjusted balances, and I've done that in blue, journalize the adjusting entries, which I've done in green, and post um, to the T accounts, which I've done in red. So the blue here represents the uh, unadjusted balances of these accounts. Now notice up in here, it doesn't tell me which accounts are debits and credits, and yet I have put them in debit and credit. Um, you know, I've put them either as debits or credits, and this I've done this based on the normal balance of the accounts. So even though this particular exam does not cover um, specifically information we've learned in chapters one and two, we're going to continue to use that information and build on that foundation. And so you're going to be expected, um, you may be expected to use things that you've learned in chapter one and two. All right, so let's go down and do the journal entries. Uh, a is service revenue accrued 900. So we've earned service revenue, we just haven't been paid yet. So March 31st, I debit accounts receivable, I credit service revenue for 900. Uh, this is always the adjusting entry to accrue service revenue. Um, unearned revenue that has now been earned 200. So I, March 31st, I debit unearned revenue, 200, so I'm lowering the liability and I'm crediting service revenue uh, because I've now earned it for 200. Office supplies on hand, 600. All right, this, is a, this might be a tricky one for some of you. Um, some of you may have struggled with this in the homework. So I had 1100 on hand. That's what my unadjusted balance shows. It tells me now that I've gone and take a, taken account that I actually have 600. So my adjusting entry, debit supplies, expense, credit supplies, is going to be for $500. It's the difference between what I show in the ledger and what I actually have on hand. That is the amount that has been used. And you can see when I post that, I post the 500, that gives me an ending balance of 600. So my adjusted balance is 600, and that ties to what it says I should have on hand. Um, that's important. If we'd done this backwards, if, we'd, if we had done this journal entry for 600, then our supplies would have shown 500 even though we counted 600, and that would be a mistake. All right, salaries owed to employees, $400. I debit salary expense, I credit salary payable for the 400. That's always the adjusting entry um, for salaries expense. This is always the adjusting entry for supplies expense. Hope you're not getting too dizzy going back and forth here. One month of prepaid rent has expired. So, I debit prepaid rent, uh, excuse me, I debit rent expense, I credit pp, pre, 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 let's try that again. I debit rent expense, I credit pp, prepaid rent, <laughs> sorry, for uh, $800. And finally, a depreciation of 150 Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Again, these. Are, this is always the adjusting entry for uh, expired uh, prepaid rent or any prepaid asset, uh, prepaid expense, and then same with depreciation. So then the last thing is that I post them, and I posted them in red. So debit AR, credit service revenue. Debit AR, it's messy, here it is, credit service revenue. And then I just went through the rest of that process. All right, so um, I hope that helps you as you kind of review uh, this problem to get prepared for the exam.